G'day punters, welcome to the mailbag. Pete Anthonis, Shane Curlio here to preview at least at Queensland Oaks and possibly another race or two if we can actually find one that we mutually agree on. But Curls, it's the start of winter. It feels like it's been here for a long time, but Eagle Farm, looking through this card, not too much rain forecast. I think it's only possibly up to five mils, so it should be on a relatively good track, we hope. I would say definitely a good four with a chance to be, um, with likely to be a good three. Um, if the sun's out, it's just that's Eagle Farm, you know. Um, yep. I've got, I can't have, I don't have any data to back this up. So I'm going to say that this meeting has been um, reduced of a bit of luster because of the washout meeting and the schedule changes. This is, um, this is a terrible card of racing, Peter. <laughs> These are terrible races. There is a group one on the card. Um, and we have a group two as well with Kem and Tari heading the market. <laughs> we know where this is going. <laughs> um, so, but look, the group one Queensland Oaks is there. Um, and we've got a, we've got a meeting full of wet track form coming onto a, you know, a dry, hard eagle farm service. It's a trap for young players, this meeting. Yeah. Um, and look, let's start with the, let's start with the Oaks. It's as great, a good a race as any to point out the traps. Um, well, the market um, has uh, Gypsy Goddess at 420 and favourite from Aravine, which is 480, best you're getting. Barb Raider, our old mate, 750. Belle Savoie, 950. And then everything else is double figures. Like there's a, a very long tail to this field. I previewed this race in detail and did runner by runner comments and <laughs> <laughs> some of my best work. Just was um, there about fifteen no's or did you use a different? I congratulated word for I congratulated connections on having a runner in a group one <laughs> and and said it was a top twenty chance. Oh wow. Um we'll race eighteen final field and I've labelled about five horses a top twenty chance. The anyway, let's start. Way. Let I'm happy to start from top to bottom here um, and go through these runner by runner because I don't have a lot else to talk about, okay. to be honest. Uh, look, Barb Raider um, got the job done for us last time. Nice run on speed, gets that again. This horse has, you know, run a, you know, ran just got knocked off in the south. I don't even know the the gin the da, the guineas they the friggin' oaks they have in South Australia. Yeah. Right? Came up here, um, you know, twenty eight days between runs, done got the job done. Wasn't overly impressive. Had every possible I thought. Fell in. It's the query for me with this horse is if they go really really fast up front. So if for whatever reason everyone looks at the speed map and goes, oh, doesn't look to be too much speed. Let's really put it on early and you get these horses coming from wider, you know, it might very well happen. If Barb Raider gets faced with a very fast tempo, I think that's a genuine concern. But if Willow does Willow things and just puts it there and it's on a soft tempo, there's no reason why it can't win again. Yeah. It's a chance with the right setup again. Yeah. Number two, a Gypsy Goddess. Um, would, I think this campaign's been a butcher. Yep. Um, but what would I know? <laughs> um, you know, went went with the blinkers on into the oaks that they have at Randwick, whatever they call that one, the AJC one, yep. the million dollar one. Um, you know, put into the race, had its chance. El Patroness held it through the line on a heavy track. Took the blinkers off at the Gold Coast, back to last on a heavy track. Ran the fastest yeah, 10, 8, 6, 4, yeah. 2, half, 50, 25 of the meeting because Pikey just give it absolutely none. <laughs> and it was like, oh, look, uh, you know, we've outsmarted everyone here. We've taken the blinkers off and gone back to last. We're, a, you know, we're the flashing light run. We're ready for the Oaks. You've drawn 22. You've got the blinkers off still. <laughs> I hope you last and miss top 10. <laughs> um, now, Dynasties. Dynasties comes out of that race, who held it yep. to the line. 
who then subsequently went back to Sydney in a benchmark 78 on a heavy track. So it's beaten Gypsy Goddess on a bog heavy track at the Gold Coast. 14 days later, back to Sydney, 1800 wet track. Stewart's report failed to handle the conditions. It's classic, isn't it? But it was beaten a long way too. It was beaten 18.5 lengths. So yeah. now we get up to 2200 back on a firm service. J Mac on gate 15. So I, I don't know about the map for Gypsy Gold S, right? And Dynasties. Yeah. I had to. I know that they're not in, in chronological order here, but they that's the form tie-in for me. So I'm happy to leave them two out of the. I'm not going to back those two. Okay. Glint of hope. Like, I'm not sure whether you saw her. Doesn't she look like a beast of a stayer, this horse? Yeah. Um, she looks like a beast of a stayer. And don't mind uh, the preparation, you know, um, not overly taxed getting here where a lot of these other horses have been Sydney, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, Tasmania. Yep. You know, like, this is just like a nice progression through the distance ranges, gets to 2200 here. Sticky draw, buckets more. You like that? I did. Yep. Um, chance. Biscayne Bay, uh, I thought it copped a peach against um, uh, Barb Raider and Co. Last time it had its chance, so I can't see it turning the tables here. Honey Creeper, um, amazingly got beat in a Tassie Oaks at $1.65 somehow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bounce back to win, a, to win a race in Sydney on a heavy track. Um, subsequently then went up to the Oaks at Ramwick. You know, got beat five. Trialed, um, you know, in between coming here, 56 days. You just can't back that set up. Yeah, and again, drawn cast. will be back there with the drawn rest of the Drawn cast. Who knows? Gin Martini. Surface. Yep, Gin Martini's been, you know, okay. Whacked away again last time. I'm just... Like, we've been on her a couple of times, and she's just a rung below these. Yeah. Hasn't had a, 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 you know, a great prep. I mean, it's had a good prep for her. Like, she's raced really well. But, like, to try and find a, a reason why to back her again, going to the well for the fourth time in a preparation, no. Uh, Festival Dancer is also a, a no. Um, drawing the car park, it's 80s. Fair enough. Um, Dynasties, we've touched on. Can't sort of really come into it. Bell Savoir gets a horror gate, tricky map, but one of those ones that looks like it's progressing through, you know, its distance ranges. And while well, Barb Raider held them fair and square, I thought mm. nothing really jumped out of that race and said, I want, you know, I need to be on this horse to turn the tables, you know, in the grand final. Yep. We get down to number 12, Aravine. This is going to be my bet in the race, Peter. Okay. Um, now, I'm purely going with team Believe Your Eye. Um, I felt like it only got warm the last hundred. Last start. I felt like it only got warm late when it won at Sandown. And this looks like a genuine, like a genuine staying filly. Yep. Um, who has progression written, stamped all over it. And it's getting through its distance range where, to me... This runs a peak. Sense of timing, all that sort of stuff. All that sort of shit. But this is like this sets up to run a peak figure in a good race, in a sorry, in a group one race. Um, with the perfect map, perfect tempo to suit, where it can just drift a little bit further back than first four or five if the, if something comes across at millions to put some tempo in to try and give it a give connections a chance to have a horse that leads the group one at the home turn <laughs> or it could or it can you know it can be right there yeah you know in a slowly run race and right on the tail of barb raider and you know wearing them down late i just has a everything says to me that this is a bet because i can have convictions about every other horse being all over the country and and or drawing um you know poorly compared to to what this horse has drawn well, not really draws. I hate that. I hate using that narrative. It's about the map. Yeah. I don't care if it's drawn twenty if it leads. Yeah, that makes you know, sense. Like it's just the map. The map just suits this so much. I can't really find a knock on this horse. Okay. Um, I won't be over betting it because I think 
you know, Gypsy Goddess can run on if, you know, and probably be in the finish if the tempo suits it or the race shape suits it. Glint of Hope's another one with a tiny bit of luck on the map early, you know, could run well as well. So it's not moral or anything like that. Um, I just think it gets, gets all the favours to run a PB. And, it, you know, it needs to go to the next level to win, but I think it certainly showed that last start at Rose Hill that it's just looking to go further again and it gets this year. And like its racing style, I'd like to be on. Very sensible. Um, the rest, I don't care, really. <laughs> um, you know, Smirk's got Waller. J-Mac off. Tricky enough gate. Taranga goes from two runs at the mile. Um, you know, straight to 2,200. Not really my go. Well, Billy re raced okay last time, but again, it's probably just that rung below and the rest, you know, whatever. They're hundreds for a reason. Yeah. Good luck to connection. So, yeah, happy to be on um, Aravine. And you can probably make excuses for anything that you don't want to back in a race like this anyway. You know, yeah. If you wanted to convince yourself. But, um, you know, I've been led to these conclusions to this conclusion by the data and I think it's very hard to get a, a three-year-old filly to keep running you know peak figure peak figure peak figure which a lot of these are completely exposed at the trip anyway where this horse has got something left in the tank all right Aravine there it is be preble did you want to say anything today no not really anything you want to <laughs> I mean look I'm looking at this race much the same like if you can if you can try and marry up the wet track data with a few of these horses, some of them have recorded God. just enormous figures over the last couple of starts. And then yeah. converting that back into a drier surface is very difficult to you know, have any great certainty. So in the end, it's a staying race, factor in the map, yeah. very heavier on the map. And then, as you said, look at horses that look to be accomplished at the 2200 and most of these have been running around either 2000 2100 so it's not too much more of a stretch yeah mm. yeah i mean the whole meeting is just full of um you know those types of horses you know that have got good wet track figures that are going to have to reproduce on an eagle farm surface which is going to be dry yep it's going to be firm um you know so there's yeah, I mean, that's the trick. I mean, I'm going to bet small and I'm going to bet around those horses that are tight in the market with wet track figures. Yep. Look, I'm going to deliberately steer away from them. Um, look, if you like, just for an example, if you want to just jump across to race four, um, oh, this you know, is Midnight, a fun race. <laughs> Midnight in Tokyo has got two really, really good performances on heavy tracks. Yep. And it's $5.50. As and it's does. got gate 10. And I was like, I need to be against this horse and yeah. find something that's, that's you know, proven this track, trip, firm surface, you know. Um, sort of fine horses like XO Lady, for example, which is well, going to be on speed. And I'm guessing you haven't found Zoo Gotcha then in the same race, coming off a very similar setup to Midnight in Tokyo. Two wet track performances, bottomless tracks. Yeah. How would you know Completely. how they're going to dry? And look, they could well transfer that form onto a dry track but if it, at you know at 270 and five dollars i'm happy to sort of work around it and, and lean towards those that are proven on a dry track yeah for sure particularly eagle farm it's a different surface so yeah that that whole every every race is just a little bit those types of horses and um yeah i'll be happy to um happy to bet small and bet around the obvious you know wet track form and go from there. That's about. That's how I'll, I'll play the day. Makes complete sense. Now you've also got a few other meetings across the weekend. What have we got? We've got uh, Gold Coast Toowoomba Saturday. You've got Sunshine Coast on Sunday. You've got Fangool on on Monday, and then Dolby on Tuesday. Um, yeah. So plenty going on. We've also got. I've got a fat share in Akatango. That two year old Ooh. with mailbag bloodstock. Um, so. I'll need to um, potentially drive to Armadale on Tuesday cool. instead of going to Dolby. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see. I've got plenty going on betting wise too. Like, but like you say, though, all those tracks and all of them are sort of coming off wet. Yeah. So more wet form. Um, are you right there, Bailey? 
<laughs> but Bailey in the background here, fucking cheering home a dollar thirty pop at Rockhampton that he marked a dollar five, and he's backed it. Christ oh. Almighty! And he's backed the second also place. We're recording a preview show here. <laughs> it's magnificent. Oh, oh, the second horse is ten fifty top toe to hole. No wonder he was cheering it. Oh. Go the exact um, as well, surely. I don't know. Have you played the exotics? No, too smart for that, of course. <laughs> yeah. So wet track. Um, you know, got sunny coast is back on the like off the poly onto the dirt under the turf. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So, like, it's just, yeah, wet, 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 and some showers around. So, bulk of the action will be at Eagle Farm Saturday. When I say bulk, there'll be, like, action, but it'll be small unit. Looking to get a few of these shorties beat that are coming off wet track wins. Beautiful. All right, Curls. Busy week. It's been a, a very busy week for yourself. We haven't even talked about the fact that you and Jay Dickens were buying horses for the last couple of days. But, nonetheless, yeah, I'm sure I'm... you'll be keen to have a week off next week or... You know, back to normal. I'm, wil- I'm actually wilted. <laughs> I'm wilted. My lips are dry. I had a couple of beers on one of the nights we were down there with um with my first drink in two months. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit wilted still, and I've got to have a shave and take my wife to Brisbane because we're going to the races at Eagle Farm tomorrow. So yeah, what a week. Just in case, I think just... that. <laughs> I think that a bit of winning won't fix. No, of course not. Of course not. I was going to suggest, though, just in case next time, I'm sure this time next year at the Gold Coast, for all the sales, they will have the non-alcoholic beer as well for sale. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. It's a changing world, I can, I can guarantee you I won't be drinking it in public. <laughs> the Heineken Zero tastes like soy sauce. That's my three-word oh, really? review. Four-word review. Yeah. Okay, I'll Sold take that on board. Not recommended. Alrighty, curls. Uh, you go well. Right, we'll uh, catch up next week. Look forward to it. Cheers, mate.